Okay, after doing risk and return of individual securities, now we will start the calculation of risk and return of portfolio. Remember, the term portfolio, it is basically a collection of shares, a combination of shares or in other words, a basket of shares. So, the investor sometimes, you know, instead of putting his entire money or his entire capital on just one script, he tries to diversify his risk by, you know, investing in various, in a pool of securities. So, that pool of securities is called as portfolio. Now, for example, if the investor is putting, you know, if he has already put his money on some uh, real estate script like DLF or Unitech. Now, this real estate sector was on a declining uh, phase for quite a long, long time. So, if he has invested around <clears throat> 1 lakh of his capital in this one script only, and if it has been, you know, in a reducing stage, if it has been in a bearish stage, a particular sector, so his entire capital would be diminishing, you know, with a continuous period of time. But some wise investor, you know, instead of putting the entire capital on just one script, if, you know, the investor picks up one security from oil and gas, that is Reliance Industries Limited, or ONGC or Care Energy, he invests, you know, out of 1 lakh around 20,000 rupees in Reliance Industries Limited. Then he might have taken up, you know, another script from some steel sector, from either Sale Steel Authority of India Limited or, you know, Tata Steel. So he might have invested around 10,000. In this particular script, retaining a script from real estate that is DLF and putting around 15,000 in this particular script, then he might have selected a security from banking sector like ICICI Bank or you know SBI State Bank of India or SBFC, you know, any of a good script from a banking sector. And if he might have invested around 25,000 in this particular script, then he might have taken up one script from telecom sector like Airtel, right? And if he might have invested around 30,000 rupees in this particular script, so on the whole, the total amount of capital 30, 45, 70, I think it comes to around rupees 1 lakh. So, he has diversified his risk and instead of putting his money on just one script, he has diversified his risk by placing his money on, you know, five scripts. Now, even if one sector like real estate is going down and he might be losing his money by investing, you know, money in real estate, then other sectors might be on the uptrend and he can easily recover and he can you know, earn very sound or decent profits by investing in a pool of you know, scripts. So that is what the meaning of this term portfolio is. A portfolio basically stands for a basket of shares or a pool of shares or a combination of shares and it is used you know, uh, by the investor to diversify his risk. Now how is it calculated the return of a portfolio is calculated by weight of a security multiplied by expected return of a security. Right? Similarly, if there are two scripts, so weight of second security multiplied by expected return of second security and might be, you know, if there are three scripts, so weight of third multiplied by expected return of third weight of fourth multiplied by the expected return of fourth security. So, return of portfolio is calculated by multiplying the respective weights of each security along with the expected return. R bar X stands for expected return of first security and R bar Y stands
times for expected return of second security. Now wait, please take down the meaning of this term. Wait, wait stands for proportion of funds, proportion of funds invested, proportion of funds invested in a particular security. Weight stands for proportion of funds invested in a particular security. Now we can calculate weights in this particular segment also, in this portfolio also. Weight is calculated by adding up all the amounts of each security. Over here the total is coming as 1 lakh. Now how can we calculate the weights? The amount invested in each security divided by the grand total. So 20,000 divided by 1 lakh will give you the weight as 0.20 then 10,000 divided by 1 lakh will give the weight as 0.10 15,000 divided by 1 lakh will give the weight as 0.15 25,000 divided by 1 lakh will give the weight as 0.25 and 30,000 divided by 1 lakh will give the weight as 0.30 right just add up all these values and see if the total is equal to 1 or not just add up all these values to check whether the total is you know equal to 1 or not it's quite easy 30 45 70 30 1 okay now we proceed. So weight, the term weight stands for proportion of funds invested in a particular security. This simply means that he has invested 20% of his capital in first company called Reliance Industries. 0 0.10 indicates that he has invested 10% of his capital in Steel Authority of India Limited. Then 0.15 or 15% in DLF company. 0.25 or 25% in ICICI and 30% in the last company which is Airtel. So weights over here stands for proportion of funds invested in a particular security and RBAR you already know, you already learned in the previous chapter RBAR stands for expected return of first security RBAR I stands for expected return of second security now the next one, this is return on portfolio, number 2 is risk of portfolio denoted by standard deviation. So risk of portfolio is calculated by W square X standard deviation square X plus W square Y standard deviation square of Y and 2 weight of x, weight of y, standard division of x, standard division of y into r x y. Kindly take down this formula for risk of portfolio, this standard division of portfolio. This is squares of weight as well as risk of first security, squares of weights and risk of second security, then twice of weight of both securities, risk of both securities and RXY right out of full form of RXY RXY indicates you know Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation between first and second security RXY indicates coefficient of correlation by Carl Pearson between first and second security this is you know the extension is very much similar to the extension of a plus b whole square which is a square plus b square plus 2ab so just consider this term as a this is a square w square x standard division square x then this is b square w square y standard division square y then twice of weights of both risk of both there is an extra term that is Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation. So this shortcut will surely help you in learning this formula and the formula which we will be you know, doing in the next lecture 
for the risk and return of a portfolio comprising of three securities. Today we are discussing you know, the return and risk of a portfolio of two securities. In the coming classes we will take up you know risk and return of portfolio comprising of three securities, four securities and so on. So we take up an illustration to understand the concept of risk and return of portfolio. Let us take illustration number three. Just tell me one thing uh, about the data that is given to us in this third illustration. First of all, what is the return of first security? What is this? 16%. That is 16%. So first of all, we will have to see what all data is given to us. Return of first security is indicated by this symbol Rx. Next, return of second security is 12%. That is 12%. Then what else is given to us in this question? Standard deviation of first security is 15% and standard deviation of second security that is 8%. What else? I think we have to have no carbon cases coefficient of correlation that is given by Rxy that is equal to 0 0.60. Now, in the last few lines, it has been clearly described to calculate the risk and return of portfolio. Are the weights given to us in this question? What are the weights? Weights of first security? 0.60. 0 0.60 and weight of second security must be 0 0.40. Now, the weights are given to us. Even if they are not given, we can always calculate it. Suppose, if the investor is, you know, investing around 60,000 in first security and 40,000 in second security so you have to total up the amount so 60,000 divided by 1 lakh would be equal to 0.60 40,000 divided by 1 lakh will be equal to 0.40 so this is how weights you know can be derived if they are not given. They are given to us directly over here in this particular problem. But it is not particular that the weight, the amount will always be equal to 60,000. If the amount is 70,000 and over here it is 30,000. So 70,000 divided by 1 lakh, the weight would be equal to 0.70. And 30,000 divided by 1 lakh, the weight would be equal to 0 0.30. Moreover, it is not necessary that the amount will always be equal to 1 lakh. It could be you know, 2 lakh, 3 lakh, 4 lakh. But the concept, remember the concept to calculate the value of weights, each amount will be divided by the grand total to get the value of weights, to get the value of proportion of funds invested in a particular security. So we have all these values with us. Now we have to calculate the return as well as risk of portfolio by using this data. So first of all, let us go for the return of portfolio. We will take up this formula. Now return of portfolio that is rate of x. The rate of first security is 0 0.60. It is given, even if it is not given to know the process, how are the rates calculated? Multiplied by R bar x, expected return of first security. That is 16% plus weight of y, weight of y is 0 0.40 multiplied by expected return of second security. Expected return of second security, this was r bar x and this is r bar y. So expected return of second security is 12. Now solve it, 16 multiplied by 0 0.60 will give you 9.6 and 12 multiplied by 0.4 will be equal to 4.8. Ultimately, adding up both these values, we will get the grand total as 14.4%. So that is how the return of a portfolio can be calculated. It can be calculated by multiplying the weight of each security along with the respective return of each security. And the return of portfolio denoted by RP is coming as 14.4%. Right? Number two, 
the risk of portfolio. We calculate the risk of portfolio with the help of this formula, which says that weight of first security square. So we have to take up the square of weight of first. So the weight of first was 0.6. You will have to, you know, square the value of the weight of first security along with the risk of first security that was 15. Then weight of second security, you will have to square it up. Weight of second security was 0 0.4, 0 0.4 or 0.40, you know, it means one and the same thing. So 0 0.4 square multiplied by standard deviation square of y. Our standard deviation of second was 8, square it up, then 2 into weight of first, weight of first is 0 0.6, weight of second that is 0 0.4, then risk of both securities, standard deviation of x is 15 and standard deviation of y is 8, multiplied by Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation that is 0.6 over here. Now just tell me 0.6 square that is 0.36 and 15 square it will be equal to 225. Then 0.4 square would be 0.16. 8 square will be 64. Now 2 multiplied by 0.6 multiplied by 0.4 into 15 into 8 multiplied by 0.6. What will be the total? 34.56. 34.56. Now multiply 225 into 0 0.36. 225 into 0 0.36 will be equal to 81. Then 64 multiplied by 0 0.16. That will be equal to 10.24. 10.24. 24 plus 34.56. Now add up all these values, they will be equal to 91, 125.8 and do the square root of it. 11.21. So that will be the risk of portfolio that is 11.21. So that is how we can calculate the return and risk of a portfolio. If you know the weights are 0 0.6 and 0 0.4 of the respective securities. In order to calculate the return on portfolio, we will have to make use of this formula weight of first multiplied by expected return of first security. Then weight of second security multiplied by expected return of second security and so on. Now one more thing, over here the weights were clearly given. Sometimes, you know, it's given in, the, in a particular problem that both the securities carry equal weight. Now, if the weights are equal, that means the value of weight of each security will be taken as 0 0.50, right? Because the equal weight, the concept of equal weight implies that 50% will be invested in the first security and 50% of the capital of the investor will be invested in the second security. So then in that case we will have to take equal weights and equal weights will be equal to 50%. Now this is about two securities. However, if you know three securities are there, then the equal weight could be 1 by 3 or simply 0.33 or 33%. If there are four securities, then equal weights would be taken as 1 by 4, that will be equal to 25% or 0.25 and so on. If the securities are 5 and it's clearly mentioned that we have to take equal rates, then the equal rates as far as 5 securities are concerned would be 1 upon 5 that will be equal to 20%. So equal rates indicate that if only the 2 securities are given, then the rates would be equal to 50%. So that was risk and return of portfolio.